Andy, I want to take you to a story in The Telegraph. This is a really interesting story, a piece from, from Matt Law, uh, where he says insiders have described 2023 at Chelsea, the first full year of the Todd Bowley um, Clear Lake capital ownership, as being a disaster and cannot wait for it to end. Uh, they, they say that they're uh, going to try and sign experienced players now in January and, and go down a different route to what they've, uh, what they've done previously. A disaster. Stamford Bridge, I mean, it's a word used by other football fans, but to come from an insider. Yeah, well, well it's a disaster, whichever way you care to look at it. I suppose the most basic way is to look at the fact that in that calendar year, the disaster year that is referred to it in that headline, um, they played 39 Premier League games and taken 39 points. It's relegation form. You know, it's out and out relegation form that they've had in that disaster year. Um, and now the idea that you can suddenly just turn it around by saying, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to sign experienced players now in the next transfer window or the next two transfer windows. Well, you've got a whole load of young players, very expensive young players on extremely long contracts. You can't just stockpile all these players. We know that. You know, Chelsea might be under investigation for... For, for financial irregularities under previous regimes, they can't afford to to do that to stockpile players. They'll have to get rid of them. But then, who are you going to get rid of? Uh, I know. I think someone suggests um, in tomorrow that maybe someone like Conor Gallagher, for example, could be someone who could be used to raise money. They're going to have to raise money, but it's going to be easier said than done. Offloading players and replacing them with experienced players um, when in, in January or in February or in or in the summer. Yeah. You mentioned Conor Gallagher, that story in the mail, Charlie, yeah. uh, as well, um, which I don't know what Chelsea fans will make of that because it was only a few months ago that they were talking about building Conor Gallagher into that sort of Frank Lampard figure. They're a guy that's come through the academy uh, at, at Stamford Bridge as well. Um, is, is that the sort of player that they should be shifting out? I mean, again, it could come, come down to a contractual situation similar to Mason Mount, right? You know, they you know, certainly should not be letting him go. Equally, I can see why they've got a situation where... Uh, FFP rules in, in terms of selling one of the homegrown players, you, you know, is more beneficial. Uh, he's only got 18 months left. He's been one of Chelsea's best performing players. You know, no one expected him really to get a grip of that midfield considering the other players they signed. But he's got his England place black as well. Uh, but I think it would be a disaster if they sold him. But equally, as you know, Pochettino said uh, up at Everton yesterday, they do need a striker. But then, you know, where are you going to get this money from without selling, you know, a key player? And you know, if you are going to sign Ivan Tony or Victor Osserman from um, Napoli, you know, you're talking 70, 80, 90, 100 million pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if, you know, Chelsea did sell Gallagher, I just don't see how they'd be able to pull this off. So, you know, they, they are in a bit of a mess. I, I think Pochettino does deserve time. It, it was always going to take a, a, a season to sort themselves out, considering how many players, how many young players they signed. Uh, but I don't think Chelsea fans, some of them, have got that much patience. And equally, when you look at that disastrous calendar year uh, in terms of the points they've managed, I do understand why they're so concerned. Yeah, it, it does seem bizarre, Andy, from the outside, doesn't it, that w within the, the billion spelt, spent during the, the Todd Bowley era that they didn't put any of that on a striker. And, you know, Pochettino, apparently, according to the story from Matt Law as well, looking to go down the more experienced route. Charlie's just mentioned yeah. uh, Ivan Tony and Victor Osherman. What, what sort of names will be in the frame realistically come January? Well, well those two will be top of the list. But again, I just agree with everything that Charlie said. How are they, how are they going to raise the money to, within FFP rules um, to buy these strikers? They do need one. I mean, obviously, they, they've got strikers who are injured at the moment. They do need one. I was at the game yesterday... Um, and I was at the game against uh, Manchester United. Um, now, he, he, he started with Jackson against United. He started with Broje yesterday. And neither of them, quite frankly, look up to the very, very elite level. So he knows that he needs striking um, reinforcements. Um, but I just don't see how he's going to offload players who are on five, six, seven-year deals, young players, um, and to raise the sorts of money that they'll, they'll need to do. They may, they may have to wait until next summer when they've got more time to do it. Uh, I certainly think that yeah. while this year's been a disaster year, they'll do well just to keep this one down, just stay mid-table and rebuild next season.